Tell me why Thanos just seemed like a strict Asian dad. I, I think as an Asian, I really like. Yeah, was he, like looked, he looked like one. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. I mean, I get where he's coming from. He's just trying to be strict on humanity. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hot Pop Boys. And let me tell you this: it is getting very hot today. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm almost embarrassed to admit that we have yet to cover this cuisine. Oh, we are at. One of the new school modern Sichuan restaurants in a 626. Hip hot. Yeah, I thought y'all, I thought you said hip hop. It could have been based off hip hop. So this food today, it's a, gonna be a mixture of traditional Chengdu food. And Chengdu is known to be the gastronomic center of China. Chengdu food by some people is considered the most flavorful food in the entire world. Dude, and I'm super excited, bro. We have some professional food experts to help us guide us through this journey. The owner of Hip Hot is from Chengdu, China. One of the partners in the restaurants is Cantonese, so they created a crazy mashup fusion cuisine that is still authentically Chengdu, but it's gotten influences from everywhere. Let's go. Hop Hop boys. boys. Hop Hot Tai. All right, so before we get into the food, we have to introduce our foodie guests, foodie experts, Jocelyn and Justine. <laughs> you guys have a huge following on Instagram. Under Hangry Diary. Under yes. Hangry Diary. I think Sichuan food is really trendy right now. It's because of the taste and all of that. And uh, Hip Hop is our favorite Sichuan restaurant in Los Angeles. Oh. So what are we looking at right here? We have the green bean jelly noodles. Yeah, it's fun. Oh man, I got a lot of sauce in mine. <laughs> it's really good though. So this is a low, low calorie, calorie yeah. good for summer. It's funny because usually things that are considered refreshing are not spicy. But this is like refreshing and spicy and that's why I think Ooh. Chengdu food is so interesting because you're gonna have something cold that's nice to eat but it's actually gonna give you that kick. Smoky scallop. Mmm. Yeah. Ooh. 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 I've never had a scallop like that. So that one's not that spicy. Mm -hmm. But it, it's actually a little bit sweet. Mm. Has a smoky barbecue flavor a little bit. It feels and tastes like a clam more than a scallop. That's why I was kind of, you know, intrigued by that. But it tastes really good. Though. Now we got the spicy squid, firefly squid, you guys. This is very unique to hip hop. <laughs> First of all, I do want to note that some people are gonna be looking at this and kind of being like, "Ew! Like, look at those squids. You see all the legs. It looks so real." Firefly squid. That was better than I thought. I didn't know what to expect. That is the most tender monster I've ever eaten. It does not taste like how it looks. Like to me, Did it was- Did you feel the explosion of juice? Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. What do you guys think about ABCs, like us not fully eating like the adventurous things? Well, I do think you guys eat a lot of adventurous things. It's just that people don't get used to it, but they taste actually really good. I just think that they just gotta be a little more adventurous and try new things, you know? I mean, if, if, the, if the trend is changing, the culture is changing, you, you gotta you know, live up to it. Chuan Chuan. This is really traditional in Chengdu, man. They love Chuan Chuan. Oh, man. They eat yo, it at like 2 a.m. Yo, I remember when we were in Chengdu, that was the first time I'd ever been there, and everybody just has a huge pot of this, and they're just eating skewer after skewer. The chef told me that these little flags here on the skewers are like essentially what like a fortune cookie would say. So something nice, something encouraging. Well, mine is Shen Lo Huo Hu. Does it mean like my life will live like a lion? You're yeah. gonna eat up all the food, <laughs> other food bloggers. Yeah. Destroy them. <laughs> I'm gonna try this tofu skin real quick. <laughs> you know, because if you know about tofu skins, tofu uh -huh. pee, yeah. it really soaks up the I'm trying to get like yeah. to Don't the do mass, it. Right? Don't do it. Um, all right, we have our next round of food. And sure. these are actually more traditional Sichuan Chengdu dishes. Yes. Correct? I think the Chuan Chuan was very traditional, the Lang Fun. And then the scallops and the squid were more like new school. Yeah. yeah. So what do we have here? We have Mapo Tofu. Okay, the classic. And, and a lot of people don't know that Mapo Tofu actually means like it's kind of a bad name, right? Well, it was named after the lady who made it. Supposedly, the, the story goes that she has a lot of scars on her face. They just named it after her scars. Give it to me! Give it to me, yeah. Justin! Yeah. Woo! Wow. The original Mapo Tofu. Oh my gosh. 
This is the real thing. Fire. Woo! Fire in my mouth. Fire. Dark yeah, really fire, 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 fire. Ooh. This yeah. is the first mala dish we really had. It's it's coming, you feel it, right? The little tingly feeling. Yeah. And the strong bean paste. Very, very strong bean paste flavor. But I love the tofu. So some some mapa tofus are really soft. The tofu's really soft. This is very firm. This is the swan chai. It's not red, but it's still super hot. Swan chai you sour veggie fish. Ooh. I think a lot of people initially might be like, ew, sour soup. But you know what I mean? Like not every culture has a sour soup, but Thai people eat sour soup. There's a lot of great sour soups out there, but it's not, I don't think, in a, to the American palate, it makes sense. So back in uh, the 90s, actually, so uh, the fishermen usually go out like a cough fish for the rich family and for the restaurants. Mm -hmm. And usually they only have the small fish left. Mm -hmm. So they will exchange uh, swan thai with the farmers. So that's how this dish was developed. I didn't get it, I missed okay. it. Okay. Wow, <laughs> you're a bad student. I took down notes. The farmers only had vegetables and they traded with the fishermen, yes. and they fused the two, the cod and the veggies together. Yo, you see David's sweat right there? <laughs> Real sweat. Hey bro, you glistening, dog. It's like it's like spicy without being heavy, this one. Yeah. You know, it's a light spicy, I think, and that comes from the peppers. There's a couple different types of peppers in there. I see red, I say green, and jalapeno. Uh, Take me now! So here, we are entering the seafood round. Now this is what really sets hip hop apart from other Sichuan restaurants. Because only until recent history, what, the past 10, 20 years, has the region of Sichuan gotten heavy amounts of seafood. So let's start with the appetizer Ooh. of the seafood section. We have a uni steamed egg. The Sichuan restaurant, this uh, steamed egg is quite common, right? Mm. But not the uni part. Uni, uni steamed, steamed egg. egg. So this is not just any ordinary steamed egg, guys. It, the egg is mixed with uh, a shrimp soup. Wow, that what egg is, is super soup? light. Let's move on to the, the razor clams. Man, that's actually a lot of razor clams. Razor, razor clams. clams. This tastes very Cantonese. Mm. You know, it's such a mixture between Cantonese and Sichuan. Mm. Okay. We have a lot of seafood in Hong Kong. Like for Cantonese food, we have a lot of seafood dishes. No. No, they do love razor clams in Hong Kong, but they wouldn't serve it like that, right? Mm -hmm. We usually steam it. Yo, guys, what's the verdict on razor clams? What do you guys think about it versus regular clams? They actually have a lot more meat. And yeah. would you guys agree they taste a, a lot, lot more chewy too? Yeah. yeah, would you guys agree that they taste a lot less sandy? Like sometimes regular clams can taste really like mm. sandy, like from Because oh, this is like a bigger piece, so yeah. you know, there's more meat to compensate for the sand. I would say that almost um, razor clams, maybe too, Almost tastes a little bit like abalone. If you think clams at all have like a funk to it, the razor clams don't have it. I will say I think the little clams per square centimeter have more flavor. It's pound yeah, for pound so tastier. The razor clams are more designed to take on the flavor profile of the sauce that it's cooked in. Hangry, just say it. Just say what you say. Think. If you disagree, say it. You're right. <laughs> this is the signature dish at dish at hip hop. This is this signature dish here. Mm. At hip hop, clear the table for the crowd. They cook with rice cakes, with uh, fried potatoes, and with bell peppers. So they they, they fry the crab and they put it on the sauce to make this. Dish. Yo, so a lot of people, I feel like they're not used to eating crab. One, cooked like this. Two, with potatoes. Three, fried potatoes and rice cakes. So this is why this is an interesting dish. Oh, I can see why Hangry's a food vlogger. She ripped apart that leg with expertise. She, she know what she's doing, bro. Show the ABCs how to eat a crab leg. Cause okay. you you destroyed that. Do it? You destroyed that with surgical precision. What? Boom. Okay, first. Okay, okay. then what? So you can eat all the meat on this side. What about the other side? Oh! Mm. And on the other side, you need to suck this off. Like a combo. So you get both. Such one crab, who would have thought? Mm. Mm. I never heard of such a thing. That's why I said hip hop serves the best mm. crab in town. What do you think about all the genre mashing between Chinese provinces? Because 20 years ago, the people from that province, it's like they only like their own style of food, yeah. right? But now 20, 30 years later, it's like so much, you know, like fusion now. People 
people can can find like what specials on the internet and they are keen to try new stuff. So that's why there are like more infused dishes and that's why there are more like seasonal dishes up in um, up in LA or even in China right now. You right now in all of LA, you're saying that the hip hop crap is your number one crab. Yes. Wow. Number yeah, one oh. crab. Okay, we are here with Chef Chu. Thank you, Chef Chu. Uh, what do you uh, hope that people take away from your restaurant? Because hip hop, it's got so many new things and so many new styles. Uh, maybe styles of interpreting Sichuan cuisine that nobody has seen before, very self, very rare, you know, compared to the more, the, the traditional restaurants, those are great too. But you are doing something new here. What do you hope that people take away from this? I hope when they eat, they don't think too much. Just judge by their tongue. If this that's something you like, it's something you like. Don't think too much like is this traditional or this is modern. We can go back to the story, but the most important is you, your tongue really likes it, not your brain. It's the taste. Wow. Most Follow important. your tongue. Do, do, Chef Chu, hip hop. Sichuan crawfish. This is a gigantic crawfish. This is almost lobster status. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of crawfish, usually. This has so much flavor. <laughs> More like crab to me. <coughs> nah. <coughs> I'm telling you it doesn't. <laughs> Be careful on inhaling Sichuan oil. So what do you think? You like the crab better or the crawfish? Straight up, no cap. That's the best crawfish I ever had in my life. Yo, I'm, Whoa! Yo, I'm, used to, I'm actually not a fan of crawfish, and I'm digging this, man. This, Dude. I'm on my third one already. Dude. This is what the delicious. I actually think you could cook anything with this flavor, whether it be crab, shrimp, or crawfish, and it would be delicious. I don't even like crawfish, but this is I ate the most crawfish in my whole entire life in one setting. Shredded, Shredded potato, potato shrimp. Song song sha. It almost tastes like potato chip fried shrimp. Yeah, shrimp chips. Right. It's like shrimp chips. Well, so. I also try a lot of fried shrimp at different places, but this one is different because it comes with a shredded potato, and it's so crispy that you can hear the sound. Right. The potato floss is really addicting because it kind of like melts in your mouth. It's a little bit chewy. It's crispy but then it all kind of like shrinks in your mouth. What was your favorite dish? Man, I gotta just go with the crawfish. Wow, For me, yeah. the reason I have to go with the crawfish is because anytime there's a, a spot that can kind of like convert me not liking something, I'm just like, hey That's man. when you know it's good. Just piggyback off you saying like, when you, when you like something you normally don't like, that's when you know it's good. I personally was wowed by, was the mopa tofu. Oh, I love that. That was really good. With the big chunks of leek and onion, and then it was the soybean sauce was very, very did strong. You, did you notice it was not silken tofu? No, that's that, it was firm tofu. Crab. Crab. Okay, crab that's, number one. That's, 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 uh, well, I can eat it alone for the crab because it comes with rice cake. What's basically. the number two? It's the mm. shredded potato shrimp. Shredded it's so shrimp unique that I can't find it anywhere else in LA right now. Just see what you go with. I really like the firefly squid. Oh, oh damn. damn. That firefly squid, you're right. No squidiness. Mm. And squidiness being theoretically a bad thing. No, no, no. Right. I would say between the squid and the crawfish, those are two things that I'm not huge fans of that they killed it here. And they're so good. And it's sort of like Chu said, Chu was saying earlier that she doesn't want people to focus on whether this restaurant is traditional or fusion or modern Sichuan or fusion with Cantonese. She said that all those, all those things may be true, but she does not want people to think about that. It's just about, did this taste amazing? Yo, thank you so much for watching this episode of Hip Hot. Shout out to Chef Chu. Shout out to the partners here. Shout out to Hangry. Shout out to Justine. Jocelyn, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for providing your expertise and your opinions. And shout out to Chef Chu for being so cool and shout out to our partner as well. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that episode of Fun Bros Food. We're with Hangry Diary. We're at Hip Hop, Monterey Park. Shout out to Nelly Dell. Hoobalad. Let us know in the comments below if you guys know of any other restaurants that are doing really cool things around LA, especially the 626. We'll want to check them out. All right, everybody. Thank you again. Follow Hangry Diary. David, Nelson, Andrew, Jocelyn, Justine. We out. Peace. Peace.